What's up guys, today I'm bringing you a video real quick, well hopefully I can make it quick, of uh, some questions that I'm asked quite frequently um, that I get in the comments and also through the YouTube Messenger um, and I haven't gotten a chance to uh, like reply, reply back to them. So I wanted to do like this little Q&A kind of video using the POV camera, um, see how this does. I haven't really gotten to use it yet on the, uh, the reef too much. I've been using it for work and I'll have an update coming on the 65 tall. I got some black sand in there today. I'm pretty much almost done with the aquascape. You know, it kind of looks like trash. I'm still finagling it a little bit. But anyways, uh, I wanted to get through these questions. I'm going to, uh, these are five questions that I get that are the most popular that I get. So uh, without any further ado, I'll go ahead and start answering them right now. The, the uh, uh, number five question is going to be what size is my tank? Uh, the tank is about 220 gallons or so. Um, yeah, it's about yeah about 215, maybe 220 gallons. Um, it measures 60 inches length, 36 inches deep, and 20 inches tall. Um, and yes, I did build this tank, and I got a video coming out for the haters that hate on me so hardcore about the way I built this tank. And uh, I got some information to shove right back up your asses, so you know who you are. So, uh, yeah, so that's what size the tank is, about 220 gallons or so. Um, with the sump, it's about 240-ish. So, uh, yeah, that's that. Uh, next question is, what is my filtration that I have on this tank? Uh, first and foremost, about 95 pounds of uh, uh, live rock um, and about 120 pounds of aragonite live sand. Um, down below... <sighs> Everything comes through my surface skimmer, through the back, down the uh, bean animal overflow. Goes into a 7 inch filter sock, gets skimmed through an ASM G3 skimmer, and I, up, I upgraded the pump to a Tunzi Hydrofoamer. It's an amazing combination. This stuff is thick, gooey, black shit when I uh, clean it at the end of the week. Um, then it goes through to the return pump chamber, where it gets either goes through this dual media reactor through GFO and ROX carbon. I use the ROX.8 uh, carbon. I really like the stuff. Um, also then it'll go through this manifold where it'll either go up to the tank through the reactor or it'll come out on this line here and go over to the refugium. I got it valved back quite a bit. I got a low flow going into the refugium. Uh, in the refugium I have a couple pieces of live rock. I have a urchin back over there. I have a large turbo snail in here to uh, keep things somewhat clean in the refugium. I have a WP-40 inside the refugium running about 50% right now. Um, so I have low flow into the refugium, but I have high flow inside the refugium, if that makes sense. I want to keep the detritus suspended, and I also want to stop, um, like you can see right there, I just put the power head in uh, like yesterday I think it was. But you can see the cyano building up in here so I want to get some flow going in here and plus everything that I've read and uh, people I've talked to say that these algaes do a lot better in high flow and most refugiums are very low flow. So that's why I got the WP-40 in there. I can turn it up if I want but right now 50% seems to be working for me. And then um, I got the low flow coming into the refugium from this line here. Um, because I want as much contact time as I can with the water with these algae to uh, export the nutrients. So that's the filtration. Uh, next question is, let's see, that was number four. Um, what do I use for flow in my tank? I got the Jabo DC 12,000 return pump, but that's valved back quite a bit. That's only running at, I think, 50% as well. Because I don't want a ton of water rushing through my sump really fast. I want, you know the water to go th slowly through the sump that way everything can get filtered through the skimmer and what have you there um, so I don't get a ton of flow from my return pump but what I attribute most of my flow to or all of my flow to are two WP-40s at the back of the tank and two RW-15s uh, kind of taking care of the center of the tank I use the RW-15s in the center of the tank because they definitely have a wider uh, flow range than the WP-40s so that's why these ones are kind of taken care of like this point of the tank to the front of the tank um, then the WP-40s, this one here I kind of have shooting towards the back of the tank 
And then down at the other end, I don't know if you can see it, the other WP-40 shoots directly down the back of the tank, which is why I got a bald spot down there. But it keeps the back of the tank from getting uh, built up with too much of that bullshit, you know, the uh, detritus and all the other stuff us reefers don't like to have in our tanks. So uh, the flow in this tank is the best I've ever had it. Um, I have all four of these pumps hooked up to the uh, high door smart wave controller so these pumps run together and then these two pumps run together and they switch every every minute so all the flow will be going this way for a minute then it switches and goes this way for a minute and uh, the pumps are all on else mode and I have to tell you I'm gonna be doing a review of the pumps and the uh, Corellia or I'm sorry the high door smart wave controller together because the Jabos paired with the smart wave controller is bar none the best flow I've ever had in a reef tank it's so randomized it's so natural looking uh, when I put my hand in there I've been snorkeling and all that stuff before and when I put my hand in there it has that gentle current this way and gentle current back it's an amazing combination so that's what I use for flow in the tank and what I use to control uh, my flow uh, my number two most popular question that I get is what my lighting is my lighting is nothing special at all it's three right now it's three I'm thinking about getting a fourth one um, but we'll see it looks like everything's just doing fine with uh, the three that I got but they are three reef breeder um, value fixtures I added an extra green light to it uh, so they kinda customized it for me but uh, that's it um, it's just the value fixture with an extra green light um, they are dimmable right now the blues run at uh, 100% and the whites, greens, and reds run at 50%. Um, they all, all the cords that came with the fixtures, I cut real short to about two foot or so, probably less. Yeah, probably about two foot. Um, and then there's a junction box at the top here. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little blue junction box right up here at the top. All the power cords for the light fixtures go in one end, and then we condense it down to, uh, 14.3 Romex um, uh, wire into two plugs, one plug for the blue, one plug for the whites, greens, and reds, and they go down to uh, two mechanical timers under the tank here, right here. This is the blue timer, that's the, uh, the white, green, and red. Um, blues run for about 10 hours, or I'm sorry, 9 hours, and the uh, whites run for about 5 so uh and then they the whites shut off first before the blues and the blues are kind of uh like the ending of the night and the beginning of the day so uh that's my lighting guys it's absolutely nothing special at all the reef breeder lights work amazing um i do not run optics on them um the lights always come with optics and i have to take them apart and i pull the optics off because um, when the optics are on way too much par i will fry coral all day long with uh those optics on so I take them off so each each uh, LED has a hundred and twenty degree um, spread so that's my lighting my number one question and I'm kinda surprised that this is number one but the number one question I have is what do I dose in my tank I don't really dose anything I don't dose alkalinity or calcium which I'm pretty sure here in the future I will be because um, my alkalinity does get used up quite a bit um, but by the time it gets to a level where it's like, you know, we sh should dose it, um, it's time for me to do my monthly water change anyway. So I've been having really good luck with just keeping up on the water changes every single month. Um, and it's like a month on the dot. Uh, water changes are huge. Um, I do about 40 gallon water changes with uh, reef crystals uh, salt. But other than that, I don't really dose anything. I do use Coralis Cell. And this is one of those products that uh, people may look at and go, this does not do shit for you. Just snake oil. Excuse me. Um, this actually, I believe in this product 100%. And here's why. I used to frag a lot of SPS. And uh, it would take four freaking ever for them to start encrusting on the base. Um, of the frag plug or what have you that, um, that I would put them on. And they would take forever to start encrusting and then start to take off and grow. I started using this Coral SL, and this is why I, I am pretty sure it's this product. Because ever since I started using the Coral SL, um, SPS growth and encrusting and all that shit 
has been phenomenal. I mean, you can see inside this tank here how much these SPS have grown. It's like, it's insane. Um, these, all these green slimers that you see back there, there's one behind this Hawkins Echinata, the one right there in the center, and then the little guy up there. They were all little nuggets about this big. Now look at the size of them. They're huge. I'm going to be doing my monthly uh, photo shoot here where I take pictures of all the coral to start recording the growth. But uh, yeah, I, do I dose the coral a cell. I do this every week. It's about 40 mils, I think, for my tank. Um, absolutely believe in that product. I really, really do. And I don't say that about a lot of them. <laughs> like 90% of the products out there, I can't say that they work. But I use that, and I also dose the uh, Red Sea Coral Color Program stuff. I have A, B, C, and D. Uh, I won these ones in a contest one time, and I didn't really get to use them that much because I was going through some issues with the tank. So I didn't want to just waste the product. Now the tank is all on track. I've been using this now for about th almost three months now. And I've got to say, this is another one of those products where I really, really think it works. Um, the colors I get out of my Euphelias and uh, some of the pastel colors. Um, I had a guy come over buy some uh, coral from me a couple days ago and asked me if I had Zeovit. And no, I don't. <laughs> I do not run Zeovit. Um, I got some water running down. Um, but he, um, now mind you, I have just white lights on right now, so everything doesn't look super pastel or whatnot. But when the blues are on with their 100% intensity and mixed with the 50% of the whites, greens, and reds, some of these corals look, I, I, can't, I don't even have a word for it, they look amazing. And they do. Some of the corals look like they come out of a Zeovit tank. So, uh, and I, I really do believe that it's from that Red Sea product. And um, I've been getting those colors ever since I started using it. So, uh, th that's all I dose in the tank. That is 100% uh, it. Um, so, I hope those answered some of your guys' questions that you had there. If you have any more, feel free to leave them uh, in the comments or whatnot. And uh, maybe I'll do another one of these videos. It's a lot easier to talk about the questions than to type them. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so here's the tank, guys. I mean, I'm getting phenomenal growth out of these corals. Um, some of these were just frags months ago, and now they're colonies. <laughs> I guess I, I'm flabbergasted at uh, the results that I've gotten with this tank. Um, we'll do kind of a top-down view real quick. To uh, show you some of these coral colors and uh, again I have uh, all whites on right now so we're not gonna get that crazy coloring look but uh, I mean amazing I am one happy reefer right about now All the Akins will be getting moved over to the 65 here uh, shortly enough. That ORA Joe the Coral has taken off back over here. That one's taken off. Um, Tricolor's doing pretty well. Um, the Garf Bonsai is a freaking monster. That thing grows like a weed. I got two frags of it, one of which being right here and the other one being down there and they've grown triple in size since I fragged them. <laughs> they grow like a weed. So if you guys want an SPS that grows really well, um, get a Garf Bonsai. <laughs> they grow really well. And if you're in Arizona and you want a Garf Bonsai, I got two frags available. <laughs> so uh, yeah, guys, um, those are the questions that I've been getting a lot of. So uh, I just wanted to uh, answer those and not seem like I'm ignoring everybody. But uh, anyways, we'll see you later.